Hello, I'm David Oliver and welcome to our video number 24. These videos have been all about my cancer. I have stage 4 cancer and while it's currently localized in my neck and not spread to other parts of the body, it will eventually get me. But you know, alcohol will not. I have 29 years of sobriety and a 12-step program and tremendous support groups have helped me achieve that over this long period of time. So I've taken those 12 steps and adapted them to uh, fears and anxieties that we have about our dying and about our death. And I want to share those with you. Again, these are my adaptations that have been very helpful to me. I call these steps 12 Steps Affirming Life and Death. These are the steps that I learned that I had to take to uh, be helpful to me. One, admit that I am powerless over the reality of death and I cannot stop uh, the dying process. You know, none of us get out of this alive. Uh, the reality of dying and death can, can almost drive you insane uh, and cause you a great deal of uh, turmoil. But there's nothing I can do to stop it. Nothing. Two, I have to come to believe that I need to be restored to sanity. You know, this is where the serenity prayer comes in really useful here. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. It's a great prayer. Everything, everything that's living eventually dies. Uh, you know, I am no different than a, a crawling fly along a windowsill or, or a falling leaf. I'm not unique uh, in this. Three, make a decision to accept death as a natural part of the creation. You know, whoever uh, or whatever uh, created this uh, great uh, universe that we live in, it had to be part of a great grand design in the first place. Death is as certain as the sun rises in the morning and as certain as setting at night. It is uh, quite remarkable. Four, made a searching and fearless moral inventory. It's a tough one. I made a list of, of all my fears and anxieties. Um, emotions that can bring you down and, and can lead you into depression. Um, emotions like uh, guilt and shame remorse, regrets about things that you haven't done in your life, and, and many more. Five, have to admit to myself, to another human being, and share with God, as I understand God, all of these shortcomings. In short, I have to take these private thoughts and make them public. Thus they become who I am and how others perceive me. So uh, it helps me to be honest and forthcoming to be public about this, like I am right now. And in the process, I learned that I'm not unique and not different. I'm, I'm just human. Six, be entirely ready to be free of these defects of character. You know, it's sharing the character defects is one thing, but being ready to get rid of them, that's something else. You've got to really be ready. So seven, I seek through humility to rid myself of these shortcomings. You know, when I am ready, I actively and consciously let go of them. Uh, take the list that I've made and, and crush it up and, and put it in a trash can. Let go. Surrender. And, uh, and symbolically, uh, I've done that, and it's very, very helpful. Eight, made a list of all persons I have harmed and be willing to make amends to them all. You know, the caregivers, the survivors, they're the ones that suffer the most. And uh, I need to know who they are and be mindful of their needs. Nine, Make direct amends to such people, when possible, 
except when to do so would injure them or others. You know, I actively need to seek out those that I've harmed. I, uh, I need to know who they are, find them, talk to them, discuss, have a conversation, and, you know, make amends for, um, for my inappropriate behaviors, and perhaps around dying and death. We make them. Ten, continue to take personal inventory and, re and when wrong, promptly admit it. You know, I have to continually uh, do these uh, moral inventories and, and uh, think of my thoughts, feelings, and, and uh, actions. It's incredibly easy to make excuses. Trust me. And so, the longer I avoid, avoid being honest, the greater the likelihood I can, I can go into depression. And you don't want to do that. Eleven, seek through reflection and deliberate contact with other dying persons to focus on living, not dying. You know, I find it rewarding to discuss uh, my situation with other cancer patients. Um, it's, a, it's a reminder to me to make the most of the moment and not focus on yesterday or tomorrow, but the now, what's happening now, and to enjoy it, and to go with it, and to celebrate it. And finally, 12, having had an awakening as a result of working these steps, I try to carry this message to others, like I am now. You know, once the realities of death and dying are accepted, uh, all the other dimensions of humanity can spring forth and come forward in all their splendor. Life is good. It's exciting. And so uh, you need to engage it. Uh, and I've been trying to do that, and it's, it has been good. So I hope these steps are helpful to you, as they are for me. In the meantime, go Tigers!